Well, I've just had a delivery, not from Next, but from eBay. And this is a real blast from the past, this is. But maybe this gives you an idea of what it is. It's a couple of iOmega zip drives. So this is a cable for the SCSI one. A power supply, it's really heavy. And this must be zip drive number one. This is a USB one. So I'm hoping I can get this working. However, the seller said this one just clicks or just, well, won't do anything. Looks like their zip disk is blocked in that one. Some more zips. Years ago, I used to work in a university and we were using the brand new Mac G3 laptops. And it was incredible then on a machine that just used floppy disks to be able to store 100 megabytes on. And it's really sort of taken me back even just seeing these. I must admit, I watched uh, another video that's here. He was doing a similar thing looking at his old disks, but they actually belong to him. Obviously these, these don't belong to me. Well, they do now, but these I will repurpose as blank disks. And this is the drive that I really remember. I had some of these and I had ones that were built into PCs as well. He did say that this fell off. I think that always fell off. Although how that comes out without. Yeah, that's a bit worrying, but I'll have to take this apart and uh, try and get that stuck back in. And then here at the back is the exciting bit. Um, you've got a SCSI connector and a zip connector which was to chain another zip drive onto it but i've bought this to try and get some software on one of these that i've just bought an old mac plus and i used to use mac pluses as well back in the day so it's a uh, very nostalgic me playing about with all of this stuff but i'm hoping that because these discs are relatively cheap and apple mac the original floppy disks disk drives aren't um, and I'm not sure whether the one I've got works or not so what I want to try and do is maybe make a boot disk which I can download on a PC or on a modern Mac and create a disk and put it in this and then use it to boot my new Mac Plus and see how that goes and then maybe look at some of my old software that I've got hanging around somewhere that I used to play with uh, on the Mac Plus. I suppose the real thing to do would be to try and plug this into a modern Mac and see what it does. I mean, I wonder if I even plugged uh, that into USB power, whether I could just use it to eject that. I don't know. I mean, surely I can do that. I need one of these, though, which I didn't get as part of this. I'm sure I've got one hanging around here somewhere. So I found one. Um, let's just see whether this will work. I don't know whether it needs to be plugged into a host. At the moment, I've just plugged it into a, a USB power adapter. So maybe that will provide enough voltage for it to come out. The user did say it bonged when it was connected into a PC. I feel that that should eject. Maybe it needs the host to do that. I don't know. There might be somewhere I can take this apart and test it. Is it doing anything? I can't hear it. I'm just looking at my power supply and it is pulling a teeny bit of voltage. So it's doing something. I've got a Mac that I use for OBS just next to me. I'm going to uh, plug it into that. So then see if it plugs actually into a host, whether it will do something. Oh. That is very promising. I mean, that might be the Mac trying to read it. So it obviously needs to get plugged into a host. It does say that modern Macs and modern PCs have the drivers for this built in. Unfortunately, I can't turn the screen on of my Mac to see whether this is working in here. It's just a Mac Mini, which I use headless. But 
Will this eject? Okay, it doesn't want to eject, but it's definitely doing something. So it's not dead. I think the next thing I need to do is just see whether I can get it to eject away or see whether there's a drive letter working on the Mac. Let's just go and have a look at that. Well, hopefully you saw that and you got it on camera. So when I looked at the Mac, um, it was showing a Zip 100, which was good. When I clicked on the Zip 100, it wasn't showing anything on it. And it sort of almost looked like I couldn't drag anything onto it as well. It was a bit weird that I can't see anything on it. But the great thing is this appears to be working. So I've went and got my laptop, which you're used to seeing, and it's got proper USB ports in it and I'm going to plug this zip drive directly into the Mac and let's see what happens. The lights flash in. Okay so that's definitely doing something so uh, let's have a look. Okay so zip 100 it's there and if I open that up there's nothing on it so let's just try new folder. That looks promising so I can write to it let's just eject that and I'll pop it in again and the hello folder is still there so it looks like I can use this on a modern Mac now of course I want to use it on my Mac Plus that's why I've got this secondary one so the idea is I write a Macintosh Plus operating system onto the zip disk and then I pop that into my SCSI zip disk which I try and boot the Mac Plus from. But first of all, where am I going to get uh, disk images? Well, let's have a look. All right, so there's this thing called Macintosh repository. And here we've got system disks for the older Macs. So I'm going to download one of these and then try and write it onto this using my modernish Mac and then see where I go from that. Okay, so there's various different ones here. I could go for the most modern system 755, but you know, I don't think I'm going to. I'm gonna download this one, system 608, uh, just in case, because I've heard that some of the system seven things, you need four meg of RAM. Uh, I don't know how much RAM I've got in my Mac Plus at the moment. It says one meg on the back though. Best thing to do is to do the minimum boot disk so I need to write that to a disk so let's download it while that's downloading I thought I'd just have a look at what this is doing in disk utility so it's a, a logical unit and the real unit and there's hardly anything on there which isn't surprising um, so we've got to work out how to write this image now it's downloaded onto this disk now I think there was a video of how to do that can be done using DD under OSX. Right, so it says how to burn it here. So this is loaded up a terminal. And the first thing I have to do is disk util list. I can see this DOS scheme for the zip 100. So this is my disk dev disk three. So that's important. And uh, the also other thing I've got to do is find the download. So let's go to CD. Okay, so that's got it in the right directory. So that's where my download is, system608.zip. Okay, that didn't work, but I've just worked out why. It's because uh, it's still a gzip file. So let's just unzip that using Finder. Let's check that this is now an image file. Yeah, so it's no longer got gzip on the end of it. So let's try again. sudo ddif equals dot system. Oops. F equals hard disk three. Glad I checked that. It was hard disk two. Hard disk three ps equals one m. Let's try that. Okay, just had to eject that and put it back in again. So let's try that again. Okay, tell you what, I'll try and format it normally on the Mac and start over. But it looks like I might have broken this disk, so uh, I think I'll either try it with another disk 
or I'll try formatting this on the, on the PC first and see whether that will make it work. But otherwise I might have to try a different disc. I mean, these discs are old. They might have had it anyway, but we'll see. Okay, I'm beginning to feel that this, uh, this actual zip disc, not the drive, is faulty, but let's just try one more time. So I've formatted this uh, as a, a full format, not a quick format on the PC, and it seems to have brought it back to life again. Though it did struggle formatting it. Um, so it, it might just be the disc, but I can try another disc, but let's just uh, try it one more go. I've unmounted that. Uh, if you see here, oh no, I haven't. Let's unmount it. So once that's unmounted, see, there's definitely an issue with this. Right, I'm going to try it with a different drive. I'm just going to go through that same process. I'll try it with a different disc, I mean, go through that same process and then run the DD afterwards and hopefully that will uh, get something going. Okay, I've finally done it. I've finally got it copied onto this disc. I don't have a video of it because I took quite a while doing it. So the next thing I've got to do is work out how to connect this SCSI disk drive to my Mac Plus. So the cable that I got with this that I showed you earlier was a complex SCSI cable. Um, and it was one of those multi-layered SCSI cables, which I used to use, but well, I've not seen one of them in years. The zip disk used this 25 pin connector. And incidentally, that's exactly the same connector as is on the back of a Mac Plus. So I'm going to need something that just, I think, is just pin to pin. So the interesting thing about these is this is exactly the same diameter as a parallel printer cable used to be. Now, I could buy a proper SCSI cable, but they were a fortune. But I found on Amazon this cable which is just an old printer cable, um, male, 25 pin. And really that's all that I need. So I think the next thing to do is to um, connect this to the Mac and uh, try and boot it up with the new zip disk in it and see what happens. <laughs> Right, I don't know whether I should start this with the disc in or anything, but I'm just not going to. I've got it plugged in. Let's turn the Mac on and see what happens. Okay, so in goes the zip disc. promising yes yes oh that's great I've got it working excellent that's it that's uh, booting off a zip disk and a, a zip disk is much more flexible because uh, there's way more space on it so I won't have to keep on disk swapping and find uh, lots of uh, older discs that go in this. I think these are 400 or 800 K discs I'm not sure uh, what they were but that's great but I've got a problem, haven't I? <laughs> no mouse. Right. That'll be the next video. Can I get a mouse working on this? And then I can see what's in this Mac volume, which is on this uh, downloaded disk image. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, again, please subscribe. Please even give it a like. That would be great. Hopefully see you in the next video. Bye.